Really quickly, talk about the trade that you guys were able to make here at number 15 in the first round. Jovan Jones, a proven guy, 26 games, I think, last year for the Chicago Fire at left back. What do you see in him for you guys next year? Uh, I think he's a guy who's a young, dynamic player. You know, we entered the offseason and we said we wanted to make our group as a whole uh, a little bit younger, a little bit faster. Um, we wanted to get a little bit better uh, or have some more options at left back. We think we've done that. Uh, and I think that Jevin's one of the talented young players in MLS. And uh, you look at what he's, how he's played for Trinidad, how he did for Chicago last year, where we felt like he was a real bright spot. Um, and we're excited to add him. What does that mean for the guys that are there now? O'Neill Fisher and Dylan Remick were guys that uh, platooned at left back. Does anybody switch? What do, we, what do you think until figure it out? You know, I think O'Neill O'Neill's best position is at right back, um, which is not to say that we won't continue to look at him at left. But I think in some ways we were tough on him by putting him out there uh, and just expecting him to be as good with his left foot as with his right. Um, Dylan Remick's a guy who's been a solid and reliable player for us for a number of years, and we hope that continues. You certainly need more than one player at every position, and uh, we hope that George, uh, Dylan Remick will continue to to contribute going forward. Were you happy to get a player out of that uh, trade? Because a lot of trades were made today for allocation money and sort of the intangibility of money down the line, but you guys actually got a potential proven starter for you next year. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I want to stress, I mean, Jovan's going to come in and he's going to compete just like everybody else is, and that's what we want in our squad is we want competition for every spot, and nothing's given and nothing's assured. But, you know, we looked at it and we said uh, we felt somebody with experience in the league like Jevin uh, had a leg up on any college kid we were going to take. Uh, and we're certainly still in a, you know, we have Champions League in four weeks or five weeks or whatever it is now. So wanted to have a player that could potentially be in the mix to help us right away. Uh, and again, that's that's what we think helped us. And again, it's a good age and a player that we think can ho hopefully can help us for a long time. And in the second round, you get a kid named Tony Alfaro from Cal State uh, Dominguez Hills, left-footed center back who actually did very well in the combine from every, all the reports. What did you see in him? Um, left-footed center back. You know, we all our center backs are right-footed right now. Uh, I think that's right. Damian Lowe might be marginally both-footed, but... Uh, you know, he was a, he's a kid that we think has a lot of potential. He's got good size. He's got a good foundation to build upon. I think it's going to take a while. Uh, but that said, he's going to come in and compete just like everybody else. And, uh, again, if it winds up being Sounders or it winds up being on S2, uh, I think it's a, a great way to stock our, our franchise. You know, we, we've talked about repeatedly, we need to get better at every level of our franchise. And we need center backs in our, in our organization. Uh, and we think that this was a good step toward making our center back depth better. Um, and... You know, I think it's, a, again, another good, young, and you know, emphasis, too, on domestic player uh, because we have a number of foreigners uh, right now with S2, and we're bumping up against the player limit, international player limit on S2, as well as in the Sounders. And so we were mindful of that in making our selections today as well, and, and it's, a, it's definitely a big deal that uh, both Tony Alfaro and, and Zach Mathers are, are domestic players. Tony's a D2 kid, Cal State Dominguez Hills. How much scouting can you do on a D2 kid, and do you sort of just take a flyer and see what happens in, in preseason? You know what? Ten years ago, it would have been you know hope you know see him once and hope. But nowadays, I mean, he's playing in L.A. I mean, you can get guys down there all the time to watch him. And he, you know, obviously, with Ziggy's ties to that area, uh, it's pretty easy for him to get reports and information on the kids. So we, we knew about him, and um, we'd gone to see him a couple times. And he was at our we hold a, a college combine in Las Vegas every year, uh, and he did very well. Arguably, was the best player in that in that Vegas combine as well. So um, you know. We feel comfortable that he that he's a guy that has some long-term potential, um, but I think that's what you're getting out of the draft these days. And and that's you know when you say uh, why Jevin Jones, uh, you know I'm not convinced that there were a lot of players that could help us right now. Uh, and so we, we took a more experienced player, and then with our other picks, we took kids that we did think had long-term potential that we could develop through us too, and uh, and the Sounders, and see how they do. Last pick of the day went to Zach Mathers, a kid from Duke who was a versatile player. I think he was a four-year starter uh, for the Blue Devils and put in some good numbers and was more of an offensive player his senior year. What would you see out of him? Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see where he fits. Uh, you know, he sees a pass very, very well. He's a very smart player. Um, he's got good feet. Um, you know, he's not as mobile as some of the other guys, so I wonder if perhaps he projects as a six uh, deeper in midfield as a pro. Uh, but again, you know, we don't have to decide that now. What we did is we took a talented kid who was good technically uh, and had a good soccer brain, and we're going to try to develop that. And again, if it's on the Sounders or S2, uh, the whole message is, we're going to take our time with these guys. We're going to give them a chance to develop, and hopefully by the time they, they're getting regular minutes for the Sounders, um, they're, they're in a position to succeed, and, and uh, we're not just throwing them out there. Last question. Lessons learned here today as you look at the draft and maybe how it's changing in MLS. We saw a lot of trades today again, and obviously there's more homegrown talent in the league now. There's not as much reliance on the college player. How's the draft changing for you as a GM? 
You know, it changed a couple of ways. I think you saw a number of teams willing to spend TAM in the draft, which is a new dynamic. So if you looked historically at the, at the amounts of money that were traded for specific picks, uh, the amounts were higher, but they were using TAM. So I think that's a, a, a definitely a wrinkle and an element that was in play that hadn't been before. Uh, and, you know, other than that, I think, you know, look, we basically take at least a first round's worth of players off the top. I mean, if you look at, I think there were roughly 20 homegrown player signings league-wide. Uh, and when you do that, then everything, everybody's a second round draft player. And I think there was, I, th I do think there were a couple big ones at, at the top, but I would say it was three to five guys that were that were more elite talents. Um, and in some cases, like in Harrison, the number one overall pick, he's a teenager. I mean, and again, you're not gonna get immediate return, which doesn't mean he's not a great pick or he's not gonna have a great career, but um, you're just gonna have to be patient with that. So I think what the college draft has turned into is, there are going to be fewer and fewer impact players uh, just because the impact players are going to be identified at some point in their development and be brought into academies. And that's a good thing. And, and this is going to be a place to stock your farm system. Uh, and, you know, maybe if you're at the very top of the draft uh, to trade picks for money and to build your team.